Big altcoin news today, starting with Solana. Solana Labs preps chat GPT plugin for real-time blockchain analysis. That's right, Solana is moving into AI. Solana Labs, the company that represents the founders of and core contributors to the Solana blockchain, is entering the world of artificial intelligence with a chat GPT plugin. The upcoming plugin will let users search the Solana blockchain using OpenAI's conversational chatbot technology. When the plugin launches, Solana Labs says that users will be able to perform various tasks through the ChatGPT AI user interface, including checking wallet balances, transferring tokens, and purchasing NFTs. Solana Labs hopes it will make it easier for users to navigate the Solana blockchain. Reminder, the Solana Foundation is giving out $1 million in grants ranging from $5,000 to $25,000 to encourage the development and use of AI for the Solana blockchain. Also, Solana's new hardware cell phone called Saga is out. It's an Android phone for $1,000. Is it worth it to get Solana's native Web3 phone? Yay or nay, would you buy Solana's Web3? Desk recently interviewed Solana's founder. This is what he has to say about the phone's features. Roughly 10 months ago, uh, Solana first teased the potential of this cell phone uh, that basically doubles as a dedicated crypto hardware wallet. Just tell us some of these features and, and why you wanted to create this. Yeah, it, it's shipped, it's live, uh, it's really, really cool. The cool thing about this is it's uh, using technology that when I was at Qualcomm, like my close friends had developed. So this creates a secure display and a secure touch interface on the phone that prevents the Android operating system from ever having the, the possibility from ever stealing your keys. And that makes the security in this device as close to a hardware wallet as a phone could allow. So kind of think of it as, you know, the place where, you know, Apple stores your face ID, that secure element in the device is now acting as your hardware wallet. Um, yeah, that's really, really important for users. Self-custody is the fundamental part feature of crypto, you know, not your keys, not, not your coins. So I think that was the really one of the key features that we wanted to implement. The other one, I think, is obviously the decentralized app store. Why did you make the choice to not have extractive fees on the app store apps? And, and we're seeing this given the context of how um, an Apple and a Google charge 30% tax on their respective storefronts. You can't charge 30% tax on Web3 assets because the Web3 assets are not owned by the marketplaces. They're owned by the users. And Magic Eden or Tensor cannot ha have 30% higher prices on their mobile app store than they do on their desktop. No user is going to pay $13,000 for, for an NFT that costs 10000 bucks in the marketplace on the desktop. It just doesn't work. And there's no way for these applications to eat that fee because they don't own that content. You have to start treating digital assets like you do physical assets, and that's just not going to happen in these big companies. I think it's going to take somebody to show that there's really a billion dollars worth of revenue to make in Web3 before they change their business models. Decentralized exchange SushiSwap with its native crypto Sushi rolls out version 3 liquidity pools to enhance the DEX's capital efficiency. The development marks the most extensive deployment of these types of pools to date. Intended to be more capital efficient, the V3 pools are expected to enhance liquidity providers, LPs, to further concentrate their funds in a narrow price range. So what's this going to do? A reduced spread between the buy and sell orders is the result, which in turn should lower slippage for traders and allow more accurate trade execution, increased trading volume, and better liquidity, ultimately benefiting LPs with higher profits. SushiSwap's V3 is now live across 13 networks, including Arbitrum, Avalanche, BNB Chain, Ethereum, Optimism, and Polygon. The future is decentralized, permissionless, another win for the decentralized exchange space. MeWe, a social media network with 20 million users, is integrating with a Polkadot parachain. Let's find out some details. Social network MeWe will integrate with the frequency blockchain network, a parachain of Polkadot. The announcement added that the company will begin moving its user accounts over to the network during this quarter. MeWe was launched in 2012 and has been touted as a Facebook alternative with allegedly better privacy protection. 
over 20 million users, and now launching on Polkadot on a parachain. This process started in November. MeWe CEO Jeffrey Edel stated that this move will allow MeWe to make a permanent commitment to data ownership for users. Quote, blockchain is like doubling down on privacy. So now you're allowing the technology to do what companies promise. Someday, MeWe could get acquired by somebody, a big company, and in that instance, the privacy aspects could be lost. But once we commit to the blockchain, we're committing to that privacy side. Big win for Polkadot. Zillica has launched a fully compatible version of EVM Ethereum Virtual Machine on its mainnet. Users are now able to transfer native Zill using wallets like MetaMask and deploy Solidity, an Ethereum smart contract language, using tools like Truffle, Hardhat. Zillica announced plans to support EVM in their 2022 roadmap and launched the EVM compatibility testnet December. Now they are fully launched with Ethereum's virtual machine. Arbitrum has airdropped 120 million ARB tokens to DAOs. Who received the ARB airdrop? Are you a part of these communities? Because you could be getting some coins. The leading recipients include TreasureDAO, SushiSwap, DopeX, Radiant, and Balancer. TreasureDAO and GMX will receive the highest allocated amounts of 8 million ARB tokens, followed by SushiSwap, Balance, Uniswap, Curve, DopeX, which will each receive between three to five million ARB tokens. 118 other ecosystem protocols will receive the ARB airdrop in varying amounts. The DAOs will have independence in choosing how to distribute their share of the ARB airdrop. They can reward users retroactively or incentivize liquidity and usage by rolling out fresh ARB incentive. Bitcoin is looking bullish to me. Bitcoin fixes a lot of problems that we're currently seeing in America and around the world. Not all problems, but a lot of them. Bitcoin solves undisciplined monetary policy, a potential default by the US and the banking crisis. Listen to Anthony Pompliano on CNBC. There's a phrase in the Bitcoin community that says Bitcoin solves this. And I think that there's a number of different reasons why people are attracted to Bitcoin. If you look at the undisciplined monetary and fiscal policy in the United States, Bitcoin fixes that as a programmatic monetary policy. If you look at the concerns around the debt limit, the potential default of the United States, investors are seeking an alternative. Bitcoin fixes that, being in a separate alternative financial system. If you even look at the banking crisis, Bitcoin fixes that because it gives you the ability to be your own bank, hold your private keys, not your keys, not your coins. And so I don't think that Bitcoin necessarily solves every problem in the world. I frankly think that there's fair critiques of the Bitcoin world where people get ahead of themselves a lot. But I do think that there's a number of concerns in the legacy financial world right now that Bitcoin specifically was built to solve. And so when you see an asset up 74%, the best performing asset in Q1, and you look over the three-year performance, we're not talking about an asset that is flat or down where many assets are. Bitcoin is up over 350% since the start of this pandemic era. And so just as people in 2020 were saying printing trillions of dollars, emergency cuts to zero and interest rates was going to lead to inflation and Bitcoin would be the fastest horse in that inflation race, that turned out to be true. And so I think that at some point, we're 15 years into this, at some point, investors have to say, regardless of whether you are a bull or a bear, the market is the referee. And the market has determined yeah. that Bitcoin is highly valuable. And I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. Make sure you subscribe to Altcoin Daily. We cover stuff like this on a daily basis, keeping you updated. Peppy Meme Coin hits a $1 billion market cap fueled by its Binance listing. And with that, Pepe Meme Coin Hysteria pushes Ethereum gas fees to a one year high. So, in essence, this is good for Ethereum, you could argue. If you're going to Bitcoin Miami, use code Altcoin Daily, 10% off, linked below. You can still get your tickets to Bitcoin Miami. And if you're going to be there, I hope to see you at this event.